You know, there's an old saying, when life hands you lemons, record a podcast. Well, this year's been one big sack of citrus, so here I go again on the microphone. A fresh episode of the Savage Sack Tap starts right now. You're listening to the Savage Sack Tap. It's not a podcast. It's not a half cast. It's just a quick shot to the balls to help you finish off the week. We're cutting through the bullshit, filling your Friday with rage-fueled logic, and cracking a few jokes along the way. So grab a bag of frozen peas. There's a savage sack tap coming your way. Smooth, lascivious, salacious, outrageous. Ah, uh, sack taps back, back again. Uh, how the fuck are we doing? It's been uh, it's been like a wild couple of weeks uh, in in my life in general. So I figured I should pop back in and uh, and do a show. And apologies, I'm going to do my best in post production to. Um, to kind of dampen the uh, the echo here, but I am recording this at my parents' shore house, which has fucking hardwood walls over the place. So I have a I have a women's knit cap uh, over the microphone, but um, that's not doing enough. So I'm gonna have to run it through a bunch of EQ filters and and all sorts of boring audio stuff that you absolutely do not give a shit. But uh, I feel the need to explain to you why it's so echoey and the audio quality sucks. I promise the content will be a lot of fun, but the audio quality may very well blow. So I, I ask you to, uh, to please bear with me during this difficult time. Mike Bontone, the Savage Sack Tap. How the fuck are we doing? Uh, I'm doing terrible, actually. A, a, a difficult time would not even begin to, Jesus fucking Christ, what a few weeks it's been. Uh, moved into a new apartment, which is cool. I like the place. It's, uh, it's a little shithole studio, but uh, moving is a massive pain in the ass because it's it's really it's it's like a it's a six to eight week six to eight week process. You got to find the place. You got to you know you got to get it before someone else gets it. Then you got to set up the whole move, and you got to you got to pack your shit and have it. It just fucking blows, and it's expensive, and it sucks. And you want to do it as uh, as infrequently as as possible. Um, so. I was doing uh, doing all of that, and uh, amidst the backdrop of uh, struggling with some some very serious shit on a, a personal level that has just thrown my fucking life upside down. That I I don't want to get into it uh, on here, but um, I'm going to be honest. Overall, it's been a very very shitty year for yours truly, and uh, I'm I'm looking forward uh, to the the end of 2018. And it's weird. I feel bad saying that because a lot of people close to me have had even worse years. And I'm like wallowing in this. Like I've had a, a number of bad events happen, um, but the people that, for the most part, that those bad events have been tied to are undoubtedly having worse years than me. Although my year has been very shitty, so you can see the conundrum. It's like I feel bad for feeling bad for myself when I should be feeling bad for uh, the people that I love, the people that I fucking care about who are having uh, hard times. But uh, such is life. It's a very... Uh, this, this trip around uh, the sun is, is always, uh, always interesting. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Anywho, uh, yeah, so the, the year's almost over, though, and hopefully, hopefully 2019 goes a little bit better uh, because, Christ, fucking 2018 was a motherfucking train wreck, son. Uh, I, th there were some bright spots. There was a bright spot or two. Um... But uh, anyway, the uh, we got the holidays coming up. That's nice. Uh, I do I do love the holidays. Merry Christmas, Happy Holiday. Now Christmas, fucking Christmas and Thanksgiving rule. Um, I will be avoiding New Year's Eve like the plague. I think. I, I always say that every year, and then it's like time comes, and I'm like, eh, eh, I can't sit inside. Can we at least get some cocaine? If you can get cocaine, New Year's Eve is awesome, but New Year's Day is even worse. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm kind of mentally kicking that one around. Um, but I will be, uh, I will be digging in on Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving. Uh, you get the night before Thanksgiving, which is great. You get to finger somebody you went to high school with, or if you're, you're way beyond high school, you got the reunion coming up, and then you get to finger someone you went to high school with who's already been through a divorce. So either way, uh, lots of fun, lots of fingering going on at the holidays, and finger foods, because on Thanksgiving you get the nice, uh, the nice appetizers. At least if you're Italian, we do a great appetizer spread before the actual meal. I don't know if, uh, if other people eat the way Italians do for, uh, for the holidays. If you don't, you're fucking missing out. 
Like the, I'm not joking. There's a scene in The Sopranos where they where they talk about it. Like you eat, you legitimately eat an entire meal before the the fucking turkey and stuff even comes out. Like I had a friend visit me for Thanksgiving once, and he spent it with my family, and he was confused uh, when looking at the spread of food uh, when he got to my uncle's house. He, he didn't get it. He's like, oh, where's the fucking turkey and, and stuffing and gravy and stuff? We're like, no, 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 no. That doesn't come out for a few hours. Uh, first, we have we got the antipasto and the calamad and the sausage and the stuffed peppers and the fucking... Ooh, my uncle does... Uh, he does... It's like a fucking... It's like a smoked salmon. It's almost like lox. I want to say that it pretty much is lox. Whatever it is, it's some sort of fucking salmon dish that is delicious. Probably one of my uh, my top top parts of the holiday season be feasting on, uh, feasting on that thing. Um... Yeah, um, and then uh, and then you get to the turkey, and turkey I feel like causes a very, a very distinct kind of fart. Like y you smell it, it comes out, and you're like, oh yeah, I can see, uh, I can still detect notes of uh, what was it there, pine nut in that stuffing? A little, uh, ooh, nice little the cranberry sauce must have been a delight. I can really, I can really catch that from across the room. That's always so. If you have to work on on Black Friday. That, that's like a nightmare because every place of business is just people fucking passing, passing turkey wind, which is, uh, yeah, you can just take, you, you get to, f you really find out whose family has a good cook the day after Thanksgiving because you're going around just inhaling people's, uh, people's turkey flatulence and you're like, mm, mm, yeah, you guys ate well, you not so much, that, uh, that stuffing definitely came from a box. But anyway, um... Ah, fuck, I'm sorry. I'm very distracted. Here's what's going on. I've got a full beard going right now, and uh, my face is not moisturized, so the wiry little hairs are, uh, are like, digging into my cheeks, and uh, it, it, it's a very miserable physical experience right now. So I'm going to shave the fuck out of my face right after we're done, done recording this. But um, and anyway, uh, yeah, my father... Uh, he, he does this often. He shits with the door open. I don't mean like open, like wide open, like you walk by and, and you, you know, you see him pushing his little dicky down into the, the commode. So if he, uh, if he lets out a squirt of pee and he's doing a number three, it gets in there. I'm he, he leaves it unlocked, which you still run a pretty big risk there, I feel like, of walking in and seeing your father pinch off a, uh, a holiday loaf. But he's afraid that, and I think this is also from the Thanksgiving episode of The Sopranos, one of his big fears in life is that he will be uh, defecating, attempting to squeeze out a hard turd and have a heart attack like one of uh, Tony Soprano's capos did and that they'll find him dead on the shitter, which is admittedly a pretty bad way to go, um, is to be found dead on, uh, on the toilet. So I understand that, but at the, at the same time, I'm like, you know, the first responders have an ax. If, if you're in there for, for two hours and, and we don't hear from you, we're going to give a knock. And if, if you don't say anything, they're going in. And, you know, if you have the heart attack and you die, no one knows. No one knows. We weren't going to know. If, if the door was unlocked, it's not like we can detect a heart attack from forever away. So just do this, you know, do, the, do us the, uh, the dignity of... I, I actually think it makes it worse. Because, again... You're not, I'm in the other room. You're having a heart attack in there. I have no idea. It's not like I'm checking up on you in the bathroom regularly. Um, so I feel like your best case scenario there is that uh, a family member walks into the bathroom to take a piss and they find your crumpled body on the floor, pants around ankles, uh, on top of a copy of the New York Times cell phone in hand attempting to call 911 and your your body's already turning cold because it's been an hour. So I don't know if the unlocking of the bathroom door uh, really does anything that that productive. Food for thought, old man. If you happen to listen to this episode, and I hope you do, because I, and I might, he, he'll, you know, he'll, he's out for a walk right now. He'll be back in a little bit. I might have to lay this, this piece of knowledge on him because it really... You're not saving anyone, and you're just making a mess for everybody else, whether we walk in on you on the shitter, dead or alive. Neither of those is pleasant. One slightly worse than the other, but I don't want to do either. Uh, anyway. Uh, it's been a hell of a couple weeks, and really a hell of a few days. 
especially for actually everybody in North Jersey. Like I've been having a shitty month. Uh, North Jersey's been having a shitty week. Like we've just been getting fucking rained on and then we got snowed and iced on. Uh, it rained the other day and I was walking down the steps of the PATH station and I, j I had to Uber down because I was, I was like, I'm not standing around waiting for a fucking bus for, in this shit. It was a fucking mess. Uh, so I Uber down to PATH and I'm going down the steps and some, some fucking fat chick is walking down the stairs, you, you fuck, you know, waddling down the stairs, looking at her phone, and she's shaking her umbrella on the stairs. Like, it's fucking rush hour. Like, it's literally 7.30, and you're fucking shaking a wet umbrella without a, a care as to who's around you. Like, there's, you're surrounded by people, and you're, you're, you're whacking us with, with fucking uh, raindrops from your, your umbrella because you're an idiot. Um... Yeah, oh, fucking terrible. And then, and then what? It snowed last night. Uh, it's Friday. It's the Friday before Thanksgiving right now, if you're wondering. So we got like three inches of snow in North Jersey, and it completely shut everything down. I mean, this is fucking embarrassing. Like, it's getting bad, the, the way transit gets in this area, when, uh, when we get any kind of precipitation. But um, I wind up... Uh, I wind up standing in a, an hour and a half long bus line outside because I keep looking at my phone. It's like, oh, yeah, it's five minutes away. It's just a little delayed, just a little delayed. And uh, I'm standing there freezing my fucking nuts off. I'm, I'm soaked. I'm cold. Everyone's miserable. And there's this, this fucking annoying, and this isn't racist. I just need to, to give you a descriptor on him. Hispanic guy, like this fruity Hispanic guy, in, he's wearing fucking leggings. This is a man wearing leggings. All right, I, so I, I'm setting the fucking scene, and he's standing behind me, and he's, he's dancing and drinking an iced coffee, and he's talking to the chick behind me, saying, I just gotta dance and talk to people. That's how you get through these. It keeps you warm if you dance and talk to people. I'm just like, oh, you motherfucker. This is why, and again, People, I don't think people hate the gay community. I think they hate faggots. I, and I think that other gay people also look at people like this guy and say, you know what, I cannot stand those fucking faggots. Because that's it. It's no one gives a shit. Like, I just, a good friend of mine recently uh, told me that, that, that he fucks dudes. And I was like, I don't give a shit. I don't fucking care. Like, fuck dudes. I don't know. You want to talk about the Mets? Um, I don't care where you stick your dick. Stick your dick wherever you want. The less straight men out there, the better. The more pussy for the rest of us. It, it, it's simple fucking math. No one doesn't... Very few people... The only people who really dislike gays are like the hardcore religious and the closeted themselves because they're afraid to admit that they, that they might be interested in, uh, in sucking a dick or two. Uh, and I, I have to give that one to Joe Rogan. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's the flaming over the top. I have to be dramatic. It, it just drives people fucking insane. If you're a homosexual out there... Listen to me, because I, this comes from a, a place of, of love. Uh, please, please, just tone it down. Just a bit. Just a couple notches. And, uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't help that the, uh, the sort of North Jersey Hispanic is not exactly quiet. Like, I know, I know out, out in the West Coast, you guys got the, uh, the Mexicans with their mariachi bands and their 40 ounces and, and their cholos and, and, and stuff, but they're, I really think that is a much more laid back breed of Hispanic. We're, we're, talking, we're talking about fucking Puerto Ricans and Cubans and shit over here. You ain't heard fucking loud till you've been on the East Coast, motherfucker. So you combine that with flamboyantly homosexual, and, and now you, you, start, you start understanding where things like the Pulse nightclub shooting come from, is what I'm saying. Um, no, that's, that's terrible. I should not, uh, should not make light of, uh, of mass shootings. Um, well, I shouldn't, but I'm going to. Anyway, I uh, spent the night at uh, my sister's place. She lives a couple blocks away. It actually wound up being a pretty good night. I went into, after they told me the, the bus was, after a 90 minute wait, they told us that the buses were not coming. Um, and Ubers were like 40 bucks, so I wasn't getting that. And my fucking USAA, God bless them, uh, noticed a suspicious charge. It was actually a charge I made, but they shut down my fucking card, so I couldn't get cash out to take a cab. So I was like, fuck. So uh, I went to the bar, waited at the train station, and I uh, waited for my sister and just went and crashed on her couch for the night. And actually, I ran into some kids I used to, uh, used to coach over at, at Riverdale High School. Shout out, go, uh, go Hawks. Hawked up, baby. Fucking Hawks soaring, soaring through the postseason. Uh, so it actually wound up being, uh, being a decent, decent night. I get up this morning, 
and uh, I hop into uh, I hop into an Uber, and literally with like my phone dying, because my my charger's at home, and I've been using my phone out in the fucking cold and sapping the battery. You know, I'm trying to figure out when the next bus go. All this shit, um, and I'm like, ugh, like what a fucking night we got going on here, and uh, eventually. Uh, I get to my sister's place, crash, and I have, I have like 9% battery left in the morning to get my, my Uber. My phone actually died while I was waiting for him, but I, you always gotta, always read that license plate, uh, before you, because you gotta, you gotta be able to point out that car, baby. That's how it goes. I don't, I'm, I'm not here to give Uber, Uber tips, I don't even know why I'm going off on this tangent, whatever the fuck. Um, but I get in, and, uh, the first thing the guy says is, smells like breakfast. I have no fucking clue what smells like breakfast means. Like, it sounds like one of those codes that if you were wearing a wire and there were some FBI guys sitting in a truck and you were, like, you know, in danger, like, they, they found the wire and they were going to shoot you, you would yell, you'd say something like, smells like breakfast, and, you know, the, the, the SWAT team would, would storm the fucking, uh, you know, the drug warehouse or, 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 you know, wherever you were, um, and they would, you know, fucking throw Mendoza and his cronies in cuffs before they could, uh, before they could feed you the fucking fishes in a pair of cement boots. But, uh, yeah, I get in and this guy's like, smells like breakfast. I'm like, I don't know what the f like, I mean, I'll be honest, uh, I had been, I had been smoking weed, drinking coffee, and farting for, for the past hour, so I don't know if... I actually smelled like the surf taco that I had had before, and he misinterpreted that to be like a breakfast burrito, or again, if this was some sort of weirdo code, but we get to riding, and like two minutes into the ride, he starts talking to his buddy, who's like another Uber driver, on the fucking speakerphone in the car. So I'm just sitting in the back, and I've been in cabs before where like the cabbie's talking to his wife, on the Bluetooth or whatever, but he's not talking on the speakerphone. Like, I can't hear the conversation. And, uh, he's talking, again, in North Jersey, and I'm really, I don't say, you, you think, you would think I'm saying some of this stuff in a, uh, like a racist or a bigoted manner. I'm not, but he's talking to a fucking Hispanic guy, and they're just talking about, like, Uber stuff, and they're talking about surge rates and fares, like, and his buddy's like, yeah, I'm, I don't, I don't even know how to do a fucking... How do I do a fucking, I don't, is it like a fucking, hey, I'm going to, uh, yeah, so I can do like a chiller, I'm going to, uh, going to Palisades Park, you say, going to pick up some rides, you know what I'm saying, yeah, but you see that the Mexican uh, essay would have been nice and laid back, I could have taken that, but this guy is, he's talking about how he's gonna, he's gonna finesse some rides in Pal Park, and they're talking about like making that paper, made a hundred one dollars in one hour, yo, and I'm just like, ugh, I don't want to fucking hear this shit. Like, with all the shit that I have going on, the last fucking thing I want to hear is a conversation between two dopes about where they're picking up the best fucking Uber rides, and, like, it, it was just fucking awful. And the word, like, I'm sitting in traffic, I'm just like, let me get out of the fucking car. And then the, the driver says to his buddy, he's like, yeah, I like it when, I like it when my passengers take care of me. I'm like, I don't know what that, first of all, I don't know what that means. Your surge pricing, it's like a $15 uh, ride for me to go for me to go uh, would take me, you know, 20 minutes to walk, except at the fucking grounds icy and blah, 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 whatever, I'm a bitch, I can't. Uh, so I went with the, the Uber. But, like, like first of all, we need to take care of This was actually the first time I gave any Uber driver less than a five-star rating and didn't tip because I was just so fucking infuriated by this human being's existence. And again, I'm sure he's a hard-working guy. Might not even be a bad guy. But uh, just what a fucking pain in the ass listening to these two have this stupid conversation. And then, you know, we just had an election. You realize these guys are allowed to vote. This is it. This is, and you know, like, this is why we have the Electoral College, by the way. Because we need the idiots in the middle of the country to balance out the idiots on the coasts. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm just, uh, I, I, I hope my passengers take care of me. And I'm not fucking taking care of shit. This was one of the worst Uber rides I have ever been in in my fucking life. And I've been in Ubers where, where the, I'm pretty sure the driver was drunk and I almost got, you know, we almost got fucking T-boned by another car. I would rather be in that Uber than this one listening to this motherfucker with his stupid police codes about breakfast or whatever the fuck he was talking about. Ugh. Yick. 
Um, anyway, uh, I know we were uh, we were talking about flatulence and and defecation with regard to uh, to Thanksgiving. Gobble gobble, Turkey Day coming up. Uh, but I do want to kind of circle back to defecation just briefly. Uh, I got stuck in a stall the other day next to a bad wiper. You know what I'm talking about? Um, so I go, I scout out, I always look for a good handicap stall. I like a handicap stall and uh, I like to go in, if I'm taking a shit at work, I like to take my time. I do, uh, I do a little something called, I, sometimes I like to work on what I call uh, a no hands erection. So I'll read, I'll read like some erotic literature or like a, like a dirty personal ad that someone's just looking for a casual fuck back in the, the good old days when Craigslist used to have those up. You could go on and, and you could read like lesbian personals and they'd be talking about getting fucking railed with a strap on or eating pussy for the first time. And it was very, uh, very erotic stuff. And uh, you use it and uh, you, you look at it and you basically train train yourself to get a hands-free erection just by having sexy thoughts. Because let me tell you something, uh, you hear all those ads for like Romans and Blue Chews and, and you go into the store and you see the, uh, the Rhino 5000s sitting up there on, on the shelf. You know why those, all that shit's so popular? Is because high def porn and frequent masturbation have killed the American male's ability to get a hands-free erection, or even any kind of erection, really. So I like to, you know, I like to train my cock, and what better time? I mean, if you can get a good bone going uh, when you're sitting taking a shit at work uh, with no, you know, again, hands-free, hands-free, those are the rules, uh, then you can get a bone under, under any circumstances, I think. So, um, so you know, I'm, I'm just sitting there minding my own fucking business, and you know, once another someone comes into the next stall, I won't do it because that's just weird. You don't want to get a fucking you don't get a rod next to some other dude unless you know unless you're double teaming some broad, and in which case you know it's sort of requisite. But um, when this guy just starts, just starts, it sounds like a it's just a loud, wet shit, and I'm like, ooh, this is bad. And uh, I don't like to. Uh, I always time my exiting of the stall for when I know there's not going to be anyone in the, uh, in, you know, the, the bathroom proper because I don't like to, I don't like people to know that I was the guy taking a shit because then they, you walk around the halls, you see them again and, you know, they're, you know, they're standing next to like the hot chick from, from sales or whatever and you walk by and, and she's like, oh, he's, uh, he's pretty cute. Looks like he works out. And then, you know, the guy just fucking leans in and blows up your mojo. He's like, well, uh, let me tell you something. About 20 minutes ago, saw him, uh, saw him coming out of the stall after he uh, took a shit. Smelled pretty bad, too. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't fuck that guy. Uh, but anyway, I always do recognize the shoes uh, in the stall next to me because I like to, I kind of like to ID the person when I'm walking, if I'm walking the halls and I see those shoes, I'm always like, ha ha, so that was you. That was you who was, uh, that sounded like you had a bad Mexican meal uh, last night. Uh, so anyway, this guy is really unloading with like a lot of, it did not sound like a healthy shit, like a lot of heavy breathing. And then the wiping process took forever. I mean, I, he must have unspooled like three or four times on the uh, the toilet paper dispenser and he was really digging in there and I can only imagine he was just probably a smear it you know when you're I, I actually had one of these the other day uh, where you wipe but all it does is like there's like a little bit of a turd left and it just smears everything around your anus and actually makes it makes things worse on the first pass and then you have to go like you have to go back in and really go from like I feel like ball sack up through like to like to like the middle of your upper back to just make sure everything is gone like you have to do an exquisite job like you gotta be like you gotta be like a fucking landscaper back there like really like like the landscaper at Versailles when they're do they're they're tending to the bushes and making different sculptures out of uh, out of the foliage like that's how you have that's the kind of the attention with which you have to wipe your ass after taking one of those those types of shits um, so I'm sitting there and just uh, uh, just uh, he's going through the in, the entire ordeal, and it's really really rough stuff to to even listen to. Like it made it ruined my ability to take a good shit. 
Um, and I wasn't even trying to get a hands-free erection at the time. I was just scrolling through, uh, scrolling through Instagram. But uh, so I, you know, I recognized he's the, he had the khakis and the uh, the duck boots on because it was a rainy day. And then I'm I'm walking down the hall about 15, 20 minutes later, and who do I see but Mr. Khaki and duck boots? I'm like, oh boy, in betwixt those cheeks lies an absolute mess. And you know he's just. He's got to walk around the rest of that day with a, just a really shitty anus, and uh, and that's no fun for uh, for anybody, really. Uh, yeah, yick, terrible, terrible stuff. Uh, so, uh, quick, uh, what do we got coming up here? I was gonna say quick social plug, but I want to tell you what's coming up in the rest of the episode, and then I will plug the social media. We got uh, the war on Christmas. The opening salvo has been fired in the war on Christmas uh, weeks ahead of uh, Thanksgiving here. So uh, an, an early start to uh, the skirmishing this 2018 Yuletide season. And then uh, I also want to talk about the war on sexy, sexy panties. That'll all be coming up first. Please check us out uh, on social media, the Savage Crew, uh, facebook.com slash the Savage Crew, uh, at Mike Montone on Twitter, at Gary underscore Moiler, on the Instagram, Moyer, Moiler, spelled M-O-Y-L-E-R, Gary underscore Moiler, on, uh, on Instagram, and um, what else? TheSavageCrew.Libson.com is the, uh, the home of the podcast. Sorry, I, like I said, man, I'm, ha- I'm having a rough fucking couple weeks, so please, please bear with me while I, uh, while I bring you this ranting and raving podcast. Um, so one sec, give me uh, give me a chance to grab my show notes here. I got my tablet charging. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it's got enough juice to last us until the end of the episode. One sec. Uh, so I love this. I saw this article uh, came across my news news feed the other day, and uh, like I said, the uh, the war on Christmas. This is I'm going with the Breitbart version because. Uh, I'm not always a Breitbart reader. Like, I'm not a fucking arch conservative or anything like that. Like, I tend to lean pretty libertarian. But when it comes to stuff like this, where the right is actually on fucking point, then I think you got to go to their guys. Uh, Photographer defends BB gun replica in a baby's A Christmas Story photo shoot. Uh, A photographer is defending the inclusion of a BB gun replica in a baby's photo shoot that was inspired by A Christmas Story. Uh, Fox News reports that Coffee Creek Studios' Amy Hale shared a photo of a baby photograph with glasses and a replica BB gun to keep with the theme, causing backlash from many social media users. And first of all, this picture is fucking adorable. Uh, it's a little baby in the uh, in Ralphie's uh, bunny suit that he gets from his aunt, and they got the leg lamp in the background, and he's holding uh, he's holding a, a mini Red Rider BB gun. Fucking precious. If you had taken this picture in like 1993, people would have been cooing and loving it, and it would have been a, a family Christmas card and 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 something to hold on to forever. But of course, it's 2018, and everyone is losing their fucking minds. Um, she even puts in the post, uh, what's it say? Only 49 days until Christmas. Ralphie loved this pink bunny suit I had made for him. Disclaimer, the BB gun is made of wood to ensure that he did not shoot his eye out during the creation of this photo. So it's n- literally not even a real gun. It is a piece of wood in the shape of a gun, which, by the way, uh, to pantomime a BB gun wasn't a real gun. Ralphie was not, he wasn't walking into the, uh, into the fucking, uh, this, this Mrs. Sch- what was the, uh, what's the name of the fucking teacher, Miss June? Is that her name? I think, I don't know. He's not walking in after he gets a C plus on that essay. He's not walking in, in like a, a bunny suit and a trench coat and fucking unloading and murking fucking, uh, Schwartz and Flick and his fucking teacher and Scott Farkas and, and, all, and all those kids. He's not, he's not mowing everyone down, all right? He, he doesn't go to fucking school in, uh, what was, uh, what was it? Fucking Newton, uh, Connecticut. He's just fucking, he, he's pretending to shoot Black Bart at a fucking, a metal post in his backyard. And this isn't even that. This is a baby with a fake wooden fucking gun. And here is what people responded on Facebook. 
will now unfollow you. Who the hell would take a picture of a baby and a gun just for money? Such a waste since you are so talented. Think hard about your lack of principles. What are you out of your fu- Think hard about your lack of sanity, you fucking nut. Think hard about your- It's a fuck- It's an adorable picture. I mean, this is fucking ad- I, I don't call things adorable very often, so you know, if, if I'm calling things adorable, then they are fucking adorable. And this kid is just fucking fresh. I mean, you have to be a fucking asshole to not like this. Uh, another one, uh, another one wrote, uh, also unfollowing and unliking you, extremely distasteful, guns are never cute, not even as a prop or movie reference, disgusting. The gun culture in this country is a disgrace. Well then, folks, I guess that means you can't, probably can't dress up as Woody from a Toy Story for Halloween anymore. Can't be a cowboy for Halloween. Can't, uh, you know, can't be a cop for Halloween. Well, yeah, that's right. They, they hate cops, too. I, how could I fucking forget? Uh, can't be a soldier for Halloween. Well, they hate the military. Uh, you can't be... <laughs> you know, who can you be? I, I, I don't know. I do not fucking know. What can you do? If you cannot take an adorable picture of a kid using... When I was when I was growing up, you would go to uh, like Gettysburg or Colonial Williamsburg or whatever to see like the, the reenactments in the battlefield, and then you would go to the, the gift shop afterwards, and if you're a little kid, you would buy one of those non-firing wooden guns. Like it just, uh, it's got the, you can cock it back and you pull the trigger and the metal hits the metal and it goes click. And it's fun, you walk around annoying the shit out of people, pretending to shoot, and then it, it breaks three days later because it's a piece of fucking garbage. But you, you, we're not even allowed to do that anymore? Like, is that what, is that what this is? Uh, and the, the woman, God fucking bless this woman. Uh, she, po she had to post a statement saying, this photo is not about a baby posed with a gun. It is about love, tradition, family, and happiness. A Christmas story has encouraged smiles, laughter, and happiness for 35 years. It also happened to be filmed right here in the Midwest where I was born and raised. So that's it. It's, it's, it's just a continuing fucking war on middle America. And I say this as an atheist raised in the New York City area. Where, you know, I, I share so many of these liberal values. Like, I think the gays should be able to butt fuck all over the place. If you want to do cocaine off some guy's cock bully for you, do your thing. But it's amazing what, what, what they will go after, what, you know, the people that I, I live around will go after, but just for the sake of this ridiculous little culture war that's going on. I mean, they really are just, just complete fucking buzzkills. And the, the annoying thing is that it used to be the guys on the, on the right who, who were like this, right? Trying to tamp down everything in like the American Family Council and stuff. And, and now, it's, uh, now it's the lefties. I will unfollow you. Ooh, ooh, who gives a shit? You know how much fucking publicity you just got this chick? Every fucking conservative on the planet is gonna be going to this chick for their Christmas photos and stuff, so good for her. I, I hope she got a shitload of business as, uh, as a result, because it's, it's an awesome, awesome picture. Love it, absolutely love it. Next. NEXT! Ooh, that was loud. Sorry, I was trying to do a little soup Nazi there. Um, trouble a Bruin at Victoria's Secret. Uh, here we go. The uh, uh, Victoria's Secret exec apologizes for transgender comments after fashion show. Uh, yeah, so uh, Victoria's Secret chief marketing officer Ed Razek apologized in a statement Friday for remarks he made in a Vogue interview published Thursday about why Victoria's Secret hasn't cast transgender models in their annual fashion show. Uh, yeah, well, I, well, I wonder why. I wonder what, be probably because the average person watching the Victoria's Secret fashion show is like a fucking 19 year old dude who just wants to sit, his, sit on his couch with his hands in his pants and get a fucking rod from some piece of ass while she walks down the fucking runway dressed like a sexy angel. He probably doesn't want to see fucking uh, Chantel with a thick Adam's apple walking around with a, a bulge in its thong. That's not sexy to like, that's, let me I rephrase that because that is sexy to some people, but to such a small percentage of the population that they can just go out and find it where they want it. You know what I mean? Um, so here's the uh, here's his little apology. 
Uh, my remark regarding the inclusion of transgender, I hate this fucking language too. You have to tiptoe like such a fucking asshole with these people. Uh, regarding the inclusion of transgender models in the Victoria's Secret fashion show came across as insensitive. I apologize. To be clear, we absolutely would cast a transgender model for the show. We've had transgender models come to castings, and like many others, they didn't make it. But it was never about gender. I admire and respect their journey to embrace who they really are. Do you though? Do you? Do you really give a fucking shit? I mean, is it a setback for the trans community if the? I mean, this is really the Victoria's Secret fashion show is like one of the highest stages that a hot chick can appear on. Like very few. Like there are beautiful, beautiful women out there. Does millions of beautiful women who are not qualified to set foot on the Victoria's Secret uh, stage. So I don't understand why we, we have to make room for a, a chick that used to be a man. When that is not, you're not, how is that, that's not for your target audience. Like no one's watching like, you know what I would like to see. Let's get a little bulge going in that thong. Uh, Razik's original comments in which he referred to transgender people as transsexuals, an outdated term, because uh, again, uh, you know, again, uh, they change the fucking, they change the language like every three weeks, so you have to figure out what the acceptable way to even describe things is before you can have the conversation, and then you can have the conversation, and then you can get railroaded for your totally reasonable uh, opinion. Um, so it's like, why don't you do 50? Why don't you do, why don't you do 24? It's like, why doesn't your show do this? He said, shouldn't you have transsexuals in the show? No, I don't think we, we should. Well, why not? Because the show is a fantasy. It's a 42 minute entertainment special. Um, he also got into the fatties. Uh, I think we address the way the market is shifting on a constant basis. If you're asking if we've considered putting a transgender model in the show or looking at putting a plus size model in the show, we have. We invented the plus size model show and what was our sister division, Lane Bryant. Lane Bryant still sells plus size lingerie, but it sells a specific range, just like every specialty retailer in the world sells a range of clothing, as do we. We market to who we sell to, we don't market to the whole world. Um, we attempt, I love this, this is a great fucking uh, hammer for this, uh, for this little bit. We attempted to do a television special for plus sizes in 2000, no one had any interest in it, still don't. And, uh, and there we go. You know, that's it. Nobody is tuning in to see fat trannies waddle down the runway while their dicks wiggle below their fucking guns. I mean, I, I don't know what to fucking tell you. The fucking, the Victoria's Secret fashion show is, is watched by, like, young, young chicks who wish that they could be, the, you know, who are eventually going to be inspired to to fucking, I don't know, become Victoria's Secret Angels. I mean, you know, it's, it's aspiring, hot, young chicks who, who one day want to walk the runway and guys who want to chill out on the couch and get a boner while, walk, while watching said chicks walk the runway. I, you know, I don't, I, I, I don't fucking understand how people, how is there a disconnect there? I, I, how, how fucking in your own world do you have to be to not understand that there isn't a large enough market for overweight transgendered women uh, to have their own fashion show or to be included in a, a lingerie fashion show? I mean, this is fucking bananas. How, how is this going? How is it even going on? It, this is insane. Literally fucking insane. You have to be a crazy person to think that anyone would, would want to do that or be involved in that or see that because it's, it don't, you know, you got, you, you probably, you, yeah, you got plenty of guys who, uh, who, who chubby chase. I've, I've certainly plugged a fatty or two, uh, and you have plenty of guys who tranny chase, probably not a lot of crossover and not enough, uh, for a network television event is what I'm saying. Uh, you know, I, I really don't know. I have no, it's like the Olympics, okay? Some events at the Olympics really don't get televised. We don't have room for everyone on that stage. I'm sorry. You know, swimming, 
mogul skiing, ski jumps, that shit is gonna take the cake. You, there's some, probably some other shit like fucking midget thumb wrestling that goes down every year at the Olympics that we just don't know about. Although that would probably be pretty good. They have short thumbs. I'd want to see how they do it. Bad, bad analogy. Um, model Tess Holiday tweeted that Victoria's Secret can kiss my fat ass. Who needs VS anyway? They never supported plus ladies, and now they're trying to diss my trans sisters? Hell nah. Um, oh, that is her fat ass. See, look, uh, you know, this broad's got a big fat ass. I'm sure you, you got a guy a couple beers deep, and he's like, yeah, I'd take a fucking crack at that thing. But no one's tuning in to see it. Uh, and he said, the guy was like, look, we got Lane Bryant for that. Like, and no one, and we, we tried to have a fat chick fashion show, and people were like, oh, you know what? Did we tell you? No one likes to look at fucking fat chicks. I, I really, really don't know. Uh, I, I don't know any other way to put it. Um, what? Tis, tis the season. Um, anyway, they, uh, they just shot it, and uh, you can catch the tranny and fatty free uh, airing on, <laughs> on December 2nd on ABC at 10 p.m. Uh, wow, yeah, fucking fantastic. Where? Uh, I don't fucking know. Quick episode. We're coming in at, uh, we'll be just under uh, 45 minutes here, which is probably good. I did, uh, did a bunch of longer ones uh, over, uh, over October, and uh, this one came in shorter. I honestly, I just wanted to get back on the microphone and, and fucking rant and do my thing because it really has been, uh, it's been a hard, shitty year for me, and I, I've just had a lot of things go wrong in my life, uh, but I'm just gonna keep hacking away at this because I, I hope against hope that somehow the sack tap will fucking prevail, and uh, me and, and all of you who have been loyally listening and, and following and, and sharing and and telling me how much you enjoy it. I really hope that we are going to stand on top of Mount Olympus and show the world our big fucking meaty cocks one day and let everybody, everybody suck on them, including the, uh, the fatties, uh, probably not the, uh, the trannies. Well, again, some of you, if, uh, if you want the trannies to suck you, we'll, we'll invite a couple. I, I hear they're pretty good at that. They make a splendid living doing it in the South Bronx. Uh, one, actually, one of them offered to suck me off uh, in, in the West Village. So they're, they're really expanding their ground. Anyway, uh, that is it for, uh, for the Savage Sack Tap. Uh, Mike Montone, of course, you can find me on Twitter, at Mike Montone. You can find me on Facebook, facebook.com slash the Savage Crew. Uh, you find me on Instagram, at Gary underscore Moiler, M-O-Y-L-E-R. Uh, the podcast is the Savage Crew. Libsyn, L I B S Y N. dot com, and you can find a link to it everywhere it's downloaded at Facebook. dot com slash the Savage Crew, and uh, and that's that. I'll catch you guys next time. Uh, thank you for for tuning in and and listening to me uh, rant and, and and spill my misery uh, on audio. And I, I hope the audio wasn't as awful as I think it was. All right, have a have a splendid day, ladies and gents. Toodles. <laughs>